Green here with Film Critique. And uh, my question, well, I have uh, kind of a three-part question. Uh, one of the things that I liked about the movie Christmas in my heart was um, when Cheryl is with the little girl and they talk about doing her hair. And um, I just thought that that was very sweet because you don't see that a lot in movies with interracial uh, relationships. A lot of times that's something that they tend to glaze over. And so I wanted to know about um, what was it like doing that and what you hope that that will accomplish. And also for all of you um, working with Hallmark, if you can go a bit more into that and what that was like and what has been the reception of a lot of these holiday movies and family movies in the black community. Thank you for the question. You know, for me, with Christmas in my heart, when I got the script and, you know, you read your script once, twice to really take in what it is all about truly. And the scenes with between myself and my granddaughter and what she was going through, there were certain things that were missing. And I was very happy that the people I was working with were completely open to tweaking, change, rewriting scenes so that I could say what I felt was important. You know, and when I got to look at my grandchild in that beautiful mass of hair on her head to let her know, no matter how you wear your hair, you are beautiful. You are beautiful. Know it, own it, and walk in the world in your beauty. You know, it was in, those were not the exact words, but the intent was there to let her know you're not professional just because you have straight hair. You could be professional with your natural hair and you are the generation that will make that change for yourself. And that was important for me to let little young girls know your hair is fabulous. Do your hair, learn how to love your hair. There was also a thing where the little girl said she was upset because she didn't know what to do with her hair. She didn't know how to care for her hair. And I thought, my God, what that must be like. And we have to help her, help that little girl and help other little girls just like that, her to own her hair and not to feel like you have to chop it off, you know, and have that little tiny Afro that very often happens to mixed race little girls. So that was very important to me. And I was very happy that they were open to it and talking about girl you got box braids you got cornrows you got this you got that you got little ninja knots you've got choices and i i was just thrilled that hallmark was open to all of that and it spoke volumes to other people because i could see it in the responses on twitter the responses on instagram and it reached exactly who it needed to reach and they were also shocked to see this film because they didn't think they'd ever see themselves like that. And I was, I was like, yes, thank you Hallmark. So you asked me about working with Hallmark, that experience that I had spoke volumes for me when it comes to working with them. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. And um, Holly? Yes. Yes, um, if you can go a little bit more into uh, working with Hallmark and also the reception that you found um, that people have in response since you've also been working with um, Hallmark for a while. Yeah, it's, it was, it's been fluid. It's been very fluid and it's been a work in progress, but everything they said they wanted to do because there was a lot of talk about how they wanted to diversify, how they wanted to be more inclusive. Um, there were baby steps early on um, and a little thing here, a little thing there, but there was, there was not quite this commitment. But now what we're seeing is actually, I mean, these three movies that we're representing on here are just awesome films that show us in all kinds of different lights, multi-generational, special needs, you know, I mean, all kinds of things. So 
I'm seeing the fruits of what they said they wanted to go. That's and right. so that is a great thing. I mean, you know, we, we've all been in a this long business. time, the three of us actresses, us, us black actresses, as I like to call them. <laughs> and we've seen, you know, we've seen all kinds of scenarios. I mean, Tina, you're coming from a, one of my favorite shows that, you know, it's just so deliciously black and so amazingly fun to watch. And, 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 um, and then, you know, my girl, Shirley Ralph is a pioneer and we've seen some stuff, right? We've seen how people have said they were going to uh, step it up and didn't actually do that. So I've got to give them props. I mean, listen, there's a lot of there, the platinum standard of Christmas movies and you see all the competition out there. You see people trying to, and I think the good news is, is that some of these other networks did step up their diversity. And I think Hallmark Channel looked and was like, okay, you know, we, we stepped up to the plate as well. So um, the being an executive producer of uh, the movies that I've been on has also been re very helpful because I'm not just a hired hand to show up, mm -hmm. but I go on the scouts and the location scouts with them. I go, you know, I'm involved with the script from um, from concept to final script. And so I feel like I have more to say than just the line, the page. Yes, that, That's been very helpful as well. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, I, I'm really happy to hear uh, of your journey with Hallmark, Holly, because I think I was impressed by um, the amount of work that had been done before I made it to the set. Then the, clearly the number of conversations, sensitive, sensitive conversations and culturally specific conversations, those conversations were had before I got there, which is why, why we wound up with such a wonderful script. But I stepped into a 15 day experience that um, not only had a beautiful script that was culturally specific and resonating, I stepped onto a, a set that was not just all black actors, but it had a lovely sprinkling of diversity. And I, um, I stepped into a very specific relationship with my um, actor colleagues and peers where we were there and without the burden of being the only one, without the burden of having to have some sort of, you know, uh, leftover plantational experience of needing to protect your space. And that kind of freedom, that kind of permission just left us actors in the space of play. We got to come in, show up in our hearts, which is what Hallmark is all about, and deliver a truly warm experience from the day go, you know, from the get go that helps to absolutely underscore the incredible work that Hallmark has been doing as a brand and the way in which that is now spreading into and touching lives in every single community. And there's just nothing but good to be said about that. Yeah. Yes. Um, yeah, piggybacking in terms of the creative experience and starting very early, with the script, um, there have been scripts that I've written the whole script with stories I've written a whole script for. This was just a treatment. It was a two page treatment that Hallmark fell in love with. I had two different networks who were competing for it. And I'm really happy it ended with Samantha DeBeppo and the Hallmark team because they were just, they, we just had a lot of great honest conversations. Like one, why would the mac and cheese scene be really important? to um, in terms of Harlem, like they wanted to make sure that it was inclusive of, of all the experience in Harlem. Like it's not just a black Southern experience, it's a Caribbean experience, it's a Dominican experience. There's so many different in terms of inclusivity, even within that small community. And um, Samantha and her, and her team and my producers, they, we had those difficult conversations. Um, in fact, you see that, like you see there's a Caribbean restaurant. Jasmine is supposed to go to the, um, to the Virgin Islands. And I know that Shirley is from Jamaica. Um, I'm from St. Croix, the US Virgin Islands. And so right. it was great to show different types of 
people from the Caribbean and talk about that because they were really interested in that. And so I just decided to make that a plot point where they were like, well, what other types of food exist? And so then that became the Black Party. That became, well, less the, the, the huge thing that um, Jasmine kind of has to overcome to that, that we incorporate all the food. So when we had those conversations, instead of shying away from them, which is why I said you have the uncomfortable conversation, they became plot points. And uh, going on set, it was wonderful that they wanted, they wanted me on set. So I was there for pre-production. I was there for production. And I'm getting feedback now about our costume design, Lorraine Coppin, because she was incredible. She's amazing. I love the way she told stories through costume. We had a black hair and makeup um, people, and they were just really concerned with making sure that Amber and Tiffany, they were really, they were really, they really wanted to make sure that Tina and Olivia and everybody else just looked lit and they did. And it was just, that was wonderful. Yeah. And I just have to, I'd have to send a shout out to Keith Powell, who also is black and he's our director, you know, yes. and I have stepped on to many a set um, in a, in a black storyline and been directed by, you know, people who didn't look like me. So again, just a sensitivity and a inclusiveness that spoke from the very beginning all the way through as a lovely thread through the project. And I, I, again, I want to give Paul more credit because when they hired Keith, they had me on the call when they were going out to casting, they had, they, they sent me the list. Um, it was just, they really included me every way through. They really wanted um, a really authentic experience. And I just really want to say thank you. You know, it's interesting. I, I just want to piggyback up when, when you talked about, you know, getting that support. I, we shoot a lot in Canada. So I shot every one of mine up in Canada. And usually in certain parts of the country, you can find people to do your hair your makeup. We were in Montreal doing this movie. There was nobody. There was nobody. And we all know that when the humidity hits the hair, it is a whole nother situation. And I was like, you got to have somebody there who can do the hair. And they were letting me know there was nobody. So I went on a search. They joined me on the search. There was nobody in the union. They found one person, one black female who might possibly be able to get into the union to be able to do our hair. Wow. wow. So that's how one black person is in the union because Hallmark helped me find that one person who's in the union in Montreal now. And they even sent a letter to all of us to say thank you because another black girl asked for a black person to do her hair and they did have one person that was available. So I thank Hallmark for taking on that journey with me as well, because it's important for me and the one who came right behind me. Wow, thank you guys so much. Um, this is fantastic. And and with the hair, I, I especially thought that that was, was really good because I've never seen that before. Um, and I didn't, I didn't know that so many black people thought that things like straight box braids were unprofessional. I mean, I've heard it outside, you know, other people, but not within the black community. So addressing that and the other things that these movies address and kind of bring forward, I think that's really important. So and, and with that, I mean, I remember I, I've been getting a lot of feedback for a holiday in Harlem and they knew people like, oh, I knew that, um, Olivia like, or Jasmine like Caleb because her hair started changing. Ooh, she got her hair done. Oh, this is a date. It was like out here tells the story. And so it was really great to, to have that. Nice, thank you guys, thank you.